Welcome back to the channel, lads and ladies. It is early in the morning. I just fed the baby a bottle, so he stopped his very, very loud calls for sustenance. And I finally have a quiet moment in the house, so we'll try and get this replay video recorded. I've been really looking forward to making another replay video, so this is exciting for me. And what better way to start it off than with Kratis himself in uh, the T-34 prototype. The, uh, the extra headlamp that costs you, what is it, $60? <laughs> it's so much money, but this is basically the ultimate collector's item. And with all the sales going on in War Thunder recently, on account of the winter holidays, Christmas being the best one. Don't at me. Uh, I, I guess people are looking forward to New Year as well. <laughs> you know, guys, like 2020 is just one year. Uh, there's, I don't know. I just kind of get the feeling that like bad news happens in pairs. So I'm ready for 2021 to be even more upsetting of a year than 2020. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just, you know, kind of like realistic expectations, right? And I'm still going to be here. I'm still going to be positive because what's the worst thing that can happen? I die and go see Jesus. Doesn't sound so bad to me. Anyway, here we are in the T-34 prototype. Uh, Cordes himself having already sent several enemy tank crews to go see the Lord. And they're going to have some splaining to do, those German World War II era fellas. And Panzer IV F2 gets completely knackered in one shot, showing just a slip of the side skirts. And that's all. Oh, that doesn't even have any skirts. And you, you hussy. Anyway, <laughs> another unidentified tank goes into an unidentified grave as the Panzer III manages to angle just enough to slip the T-34's stubby, chubby Soviet potato. And yet, the Stug, not quite so fortunate. I'm, things are happening so fast here. My goodness, the enemy tank destroyer poked out try and take advantage of the T-34 in his reloading state but he didn't move fast enough and that just goes to show that especially in a low profile tank destroyer like this Sturmgeschutz you really are best served by flanking and spanking the enemy or engaging from long range where your armor can be more effective the Stug armor while not the thickest is of a somewhat consistent um, durability. It doesn't have big glaring weak spots if you're at a range where you're flat on 50 to 80 millimeters of armor is actually effective. It's, you know, that can be something of a requirement. But again, sniping or flanking, especially engaging enemies who are already distracted, definitely helps and it doesn't count if you're on the same vector as the teammate that is distracting your enemy so try and get just a bit off to one side or the other from your teammates spread that net so it's not easy for the enemy to trade targets to you you'll thank me later excuse me sorry I'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit schnarfily today. Uh, I don't know if I'll edit that out. Probably not, so enjoy that. <laughs> Sniffing snot ASMR. But here, the Panzer IV F2, a little bit too horny and pays the price for taking ooh, a risky shot at our guy, but taking down the enemy's relief driver and loader is going to only delay his aggression. I'm not quite sure what's going Yep, he's pushing up as you do. Panzer IV F2, not the best gun handling on the move, and he whiffs another shot into the well angled side armor of Cordy's. He's learning a valuable lesson about BS Stellinium armored plates as the Poomer zooms in and gets stacked in the process. Quick angling time and 
Panzer III doesn't quite have enough time to get a round off before an ally takes him down. That was a close call in a match that has been completely action-packed. The Soviets holding the only cap zone on the map solidly as Cordes and Co. take down the enemy advances. Nicely done. Beautiful little tank. Not worth the price, unless you're crazy like me. And uh, one day, I may actually buy one of these things. But that day is not today. There's just too many other things to get. And uh, I have a hard enough time explaining to my wife my expenditure of gaming money on imaginary tanks. Anyway. Uh, you know the real ones they just they cost too much to drive and there's only so many things you're allowed to shoot at anyway <laughs> I hope you all have been having a pleasant morning I've got a couple more replays lined up for you and QWERTY's is not done killing he's just got to try and chase down one more German tanker before the match winds to a close this has been absolute dominance on behalf of him and his team you can see he's been getting some good support here and that is always a nice thing to experience the germans very strong at this tier but the soviet tanks also quite reliable as he finds not a german but an italian uh, bit of the axis going on there in a borrowed m3 so there you go that was our guy Cordy's and now a new face to the channel I think quibble master maybe I've seen him before I feel like I've said that delightful name quibble master before but it's been a while and now in the m4 a1 fl10 one of the most overpowered medium tanks in the game for its tier and understandably so with the uh, FL-10 turret that is just about the same as the one you find on the uh, what is it a 6.0 light tank in the same line so being a premium definitely has its advantages and while the M4A1 chassis is not not particular is it just the m4 anyway uh, it's not particularly strong and its mobility is not bad it's a stout medium tank concept you really don't want to rely on your survivability but you might be able to deal with something like spaa from the front that's always helpful and what you have in the turret is a ridiculously powerful oscillating turret auto loader with I think it's a 12 round clipazine so this thing can put down a lot of pain downrange in a short amount of time incredible muzzle velocity armor penetration and good post pen damage uh, now because it's AP and not AP Heh. <laughs> oh look, a Churchill. Goodbye, Mr. Churchill. Nicely aimed shot there. Even finds some ammunition with the copious amounts of spalling in addition to taking down the entire crew the old-fashioned way. Really goes to show that the French AP rounds are quite strong and they have been almost entirely from their inception and a lot of that comes down to the fact that AP Spalling received a significant buff in post penetration damage when the French tanks came to the game and this is when you would think our guy would die so easy to get cannon barrel tortured by a spaghetti boy but Giuseppe just wasn't on the peak of his game today and he waited around long enough to get daka by our guy Quibble. Or, not Daka, more like Kaplowied. And that's exactly what happened. Little tiny turret, 
of the little tiny Italian A. Eh. S P A A T D <laughs> wobbling on the ground after it got blown off by a very significant ammo rack explosion. Always nice to see little effects like that in the game. Quibble as well, picking up after himself, leaving no trace as you do, clears the lane of advance just in case he wants to move that way in the future, or even opening the way for an ally, taking out the entire turret crew and the engine of a bush Wookiee, sending him back to Endor where he belongs. Sorry, Kashyyyk? Anyway, Kashyyyk. I keep forgetting that, uh, that Chewbacca is a Wookiee and he lives on the planet of Endor, but he was born on Kashyyyk. That don't make no sense. Anyway, <laughs> taking a uh, informed but otherwise blind shot into this uh, Middle Eastern, Middle Ages style architecture, missing the first time but picking up another Luigi Mark II as somehow a Yak Panzer 38T jumps him from oblivion uh, striding out of the oblivion gate sigil in hand sigil stone I should say ready to slot another 12% chameleon effect into his gear and somehow bouncing off the front plate of our guy quibble master showing that the M4A1 can occasionally do stupid things with its armor penetration or sorry armor protection and do I see a single crew member knocked out? Maybe he didn't bounce that round, but just kind of halfway absorbed it. The body of uh, French name soldier number three taking the blow for his team. And that path he cleared by towing away <laughs> is now being filled by another speedy boy as the Poomer comes in and tries to zoom and poom everyone on Quibble's team only to be frustrated by the armor protection of the infamous KV-1 and taken down by the second round to come out of the hefty barrel of our guy Quibble Master. Panzer 38T thinking that he's an assault tank pushes up on the KV. Quibble going for uh, was the transmission and cannon barrel torture and somehow finding the one place he can bounce off the frontal plate of the Jagdpanzer ends up taking him down after a few reloads quick ones by the way really showing off what the FL-10 can do again I believe this match has well demonstrated the power of this medium tank it is a premium, by the way, <laughs> and one of the most enjoyable French vehicles. You get into the autoloaders exceptionally early, and even if you do get taken down, you can have a lot of fun from a firing first scenario. And Panda Bear ZZZ Delive? We'll go with that. <laughs> Sleepy Panda now continuing to fire some continuous fire toward the enemy from his whatever the hell this thing ship is. Can you tell that I haven't been playing naval lately? I did um, I did try getting into some matches but at 5-7 naval I was sitting at like a two and a half minute wait time and I used to wait like seven minutes to get into a match back when I was playing air RB for certain tiers and I used to wait around that time for naval matches as well I'm not sure how long it takes to get into a match and my god that is a lot of sustained firepower it's just blam 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 and you know what? I love it. The old rolling fire, the old continuous damage meme, 
as he hits round after round and more splashing down about the area of that enemy whatever the hell it is looks like a heavy cruiser and it's gonna be I used to know what thing this was I used to know what the name of this thing was but uh, I think it's British <laughs> I haven't been playing naval okay I just can't wait more than two minutes for a match my life moves too fast right now if I spend more than 10 minutes in a match I know I'm gonna be changing poopy diapers or feeding a baby or some other thing and you know what I'm okay with that it's worth it but I've also tried to streamline the rest of my life to where I can still do the things that I enjoy doing yeah you take down that oil tug um, barge barge we'll go with barge he's an oiler though that you can be sure of and it's Exxon Valdez time oh no what was I saying I've tried to streamline the other aspects of my life my gaming my making videos maybe you can tell <laughs> I've been making a lot more um, musical montages which by the way the reason that I make those is just because I really like to put on music for YouTube videos and I really like to see War Thunder kills so they're the kind of things that I like to do they're the kind of things that I like to watch I watch a lot of them myself if YouTube would record my own viewership my numbers would go way way up uh, I love the stuff that I make <laughs> but uh, also I don't have to find quiet time to make those I can just kind of cobble them together uh, moment by moment as I get the time in between being a daddy getting attacked by my girls uh, being needed by my baby boy um, then I can just kind of build those bit by bit over the course of a day and it's relaxing and pleasant and I know they're not as interesting but they're a lot more doable for me in my current condition as a daddy and uh, panda bear is here doing his best to uh, earn the title of father of the seas sending gifts to his children downrange at a range of around 4800 with the uh, the dual purpose cannons that he has on this what is this a light cruiser I'm gonna go with light cruiser anyway uh, this is a good range for him he's still gonna have some armor penetration value and the rounds are gonna start to drop in a nice um, what's it called sort of a vertical dropping why can I not think today look at the amount of damage he's dishing out though uh, and I was going to say that he's not going to be able to do much to the battleships that are going to start to take over the meta. Uh, I've done a little bit of looking at how a light cruiser and, uh, and destroyer guns fare against battleships because they will be facing them on a fairly regular basis and the the outcome my friends is is not bright for the smaller caliber cannons battleships are kind of designed to shrug off damage and absorb an incredible amount of fire and anything short of large heavy cruiser guns or battleship guns is just going to do absolutely nothing at all in the current meta of War Thunder so that's pretty disheartening and it has drawn me to Japan <laughs> because they have the most terrifying torpedoes in the game and I hope that at least with them you'll be able to deal with larger vessels and they're not bad against lighter ships as well although light cruisers and destroyers are gonna have the kind of rudder authority that is essential for dodging walls of skill enemy battleships 
are significantly less maneuverable and while that usually means very little in large ship engagements in War Thunder that's going to mean the difference between having time to dodge the long lens wall of skill and well not so when I do finally get into some matches I hope to research Japanese uh, naval vessels fairly rapidly I hear they have some cool battleships <laughs> but that's gonna be in the future for naval I'm sure and then maybe I don't know naval uh, big ships it takes a long time to get into a match and then I mean stuff like this happens I mean I guess it looks kind of cool right you just kind of open fire on people and keep shooting until they're all dead but <laughs> I just don't I don't get it man and does it look like everybody's holding still right now is that the meta for naval now to sit to become an island cuckoo kachoo and uh, at a range of 10 kilometers, Panda Bears is still getting hits, and those gonna be those are gonna be good. Plunging fire is what I was looking for with his uh, uh, armor-piercing, high-explosive base-fused rounds. He is Tez Leeds uh, yeeting on these fools, uh, and of course the reason for a base fuse is these shells encounter an incredible amount of kinetic and yeah he is sitting completely still and making himself an easy target for enemy bombs unfortunately for the enemy team uh, that bomb did not do enough damage to take him down and uh, I was gonna talk about based fuse shells but whatever I don't I'm not what's that guy's name there's a guy who does the naval videos and he's pretty cool and you know what when I play more naval I'll probably watch him I'm doing a great job of expressing myself today by the way did I mention that I haven't had my caffeine <laughs> so <laughs> you're welcome this is this is the best I have but aircraft and naval battles really really seem underwhelming for the most part they cost more SP than big ships you are at a serious disadvantage in terms of protection as again these dual purpose cannons can definitely oh are we sinking now is that what's happening did the did the aircraft do that much damage well kudos to you buddy ballyhoo and all that but uh what was i saying aircraft really have a lot of challenges in naval and I suppose that's why you don't see them quite as often when facing these larger ships. At least that's been my experience in the past. And we've only seen one aircraft and just long enough for a bomb to come and blow up half of our ship. So I suppose there is a place for some aircraft in the game. It just seems like anti-aircraft defenses can be absolutely overwhelming and again the amount of damage these ships can survive is somewhat ludicrous but you know something like the Satan bombs of several of the uh, the good German bombers especially since they can move so quickly maybe that can give them an advantage uh, getting good with your bomber view and then having enemy ships basically just holding still for you could probably really help and maybe there's a place for aircraft in naval battles but if you look at the amount of damage that panda bears has done he sunk five enemy ships he's been switching fire between lots of targets he's been dealing an incredible amount of damage with the sustained fire from his guns and the amount of firepower that these vessels can put out is truly astounding and then you have a bomber or a torpedo bomber that can get maybe one or two kills you can hit with you know as many as three torpedoes and what does that get you maybe one or two kills so again the cost of using aircraft is fairly high the risk is 
very high in terms of being intercepted by anti-aircraft fire. The chances of you surviving an attack run fairly low, the rewards very low. So I don't know, maybe it's a good second spawn for a naval. I could sort of see that making sense, but eh, eh. I'll wait till top tier naval where you can have a, a phantom against, you know, <laughs> whatever stealth cruiser people are using in the year 2025. But that is, uh, that is fun for another time, I'm sure. And unfortunately, Panda Bears seems to be having something of an issue here. You know, from the, from the fire controller's view, you, uh, you might see a little bit of smoke and hear a rumbling uh, happy little hearth uh, chugging away merrily there and then you zoom out to see oh god the whole ship's on fire well at least they stopped sinking <laughs> wait we need the water now the idea of a naval vessel catching fire and then sinking into the water on which it floats. Ironic, but understandable. Oh, the fires went out. I tell you, there is an absolutely top-notch damage control team on this vessel. Metals, T and metals, all round. Well done, lads. Uh, that is a fairly impressive amount of survivability. And here, one of those German bombers that we hear so much about now coming under fire from the dual purpose anti aircraft cannons on this ship. High explosive loaded, so he's going to need a direct hit. And it looks like that's exactly what somebody got on that. What is it? A. Uh, Heinkel 111. Torpedoes coming in and it looks like Panda Bears is definitely not going to be able to dodge having sustained a significant amount of damage and then eating three torps in the process. German bomber I don't what what just happened all the boats flew off of the deck. Well I mean it looks like Gaijin is trying <laughs> to make ship destruction look a little bit more impressive but I don't know that that seemed a little weird. It was teleported inside out, and then it exploded. <laughs> anyway, he's back in what looks like the same ship. Again, I haven't been playing naval. I just don't have the time. I do want to get around to it. I picked up the the Japanese premium light cruiser. That ha is it a light cruiser? I think it is. It's got you know somewhat small dual purpose cannons and I think that'll really turn out well for it. you know nice to be able to shoot down aircraft support your team with sustained firepower and uh, knacker anything that's not a heavy cruiser or a battleship which sit at the same battle rating as you and uh, have a whole bunch of, well I mean a decent amount of long lance torpedoes to really really bring the pain to the thick boys so that'll be a lot of fun in the future I'm sure sit back enjoy the simple life you know helmsman set your course fire control have some fun and long lands I sorry wrong rants torpedo <laughs> go win the war for us do your best Gan uh, and until that day comes you know what I'll catch you guys in the next video as usual there is a link to my discord if you'd like to join our little community uh, it's been cozy it's been nice hanging out from you guys and sorry hanging out with you guys and hearing from you guys uh, with the understanding that I'm kind of a busy busy boy these days but I just I like you guys catch you in the next video bye bye